The revealing look at a relationship usually cloaked in the strictest of privacy, the relationship between megawatt celebrities and their private physicians, doctors who are sometimes hired for their discretion and their prescription pads. Was Dr. Conrad Murray one such physician? Was Michael Jackson one such celebrity? Today, an intensely private scene between them was laid bare in a California court. Here's ABC's Jim Avila for our series, Crime and Punishment. Conrad Murray met with police two days after Michael Jackson died, hoping a face-to-face -face interview would convince police not to charge him with a crime. I tried to wean him off okay. that medication. Conrad Murray comes into this interview with his lawyer in the hope of avoiding prosecution, of spilling the beans, telling exactly what happened. It didn't work. It's an informal interview, audio taped by police, and who hear an Murray, emotional doctor saddened over the loss of his one and only patient. I mean, I love Mr. Jackson. He was my friend, and I wanted to help him as much as I can. Up to this point, Dr. Murray has been characterized as a reckless guy who's trying to cover up the scene. Suddenly he gives what sounds like a rational explanation for why he did what he did. In fact, Dr. Murray gives a complete timeline of a restless night in Michael Jackson's second floor bedroom what about all the peace after his final rehearsal for his big show. What about flowering fields? Is there a time? It's 1 a.m. Murray says Jackson showers, changes into his pajamas, and is given a rub down with a bleaching cream for his skin condition. By 2 a.m., he is complaining he cannot sleep and is given his first sedative. At around 3 a.m., another different sedative. At around 4.30, more of the first sedative. The sun rises and still no sleep, so at 7.30, a repeat dose of the second sedative. And at 10.30 in the morning, nine hours without sleep, Jackson is asking, no, begging for milk. At first, the police think Dr. Murray is actually talking about cow's milk. He said, please, please give me some milk so that I can sleep. Hot milk or warm or just... This is just a medicine. What is the medicine? It's called Propofol. Dr. Murray tells police he gave Michael Jackson Propofol for two months every day, and he wasn't the first doctor to give it to him. The first time that... Uh, milk was used on him. Was it your idea or was it his idea? His. He said, well, it works. I know it works. But Dr. Murray says he continually warned against the dangerous anesthesia and actually stopped giving Jackson propofol three days before he died. But on this night, Michael would not fall asleep and became more and more desperate. He said, just make me sleep. I can't function if I don't sleep. So. I agreed at that time that I would switch to the proof for. It is not a legal defense for Dr. Murray to say, Michael Jackson asked me, begged me for propofol, and so I gave it to him. But it may humanize him to the jurors and at least provide something of an explanation for some of his conduct. After the propofol is given, Dr. Murray says Jackson finally falls asleep. And with oxygen nearby and a pulse meter to monitor his breathing and heart rate, Murray says he goes to the bathroom on the same second floor. For only two minutes, he claims. When I came back, immediately I felt for a pulse, and I was able to get a 30 pulse in the femoral region. Um, his body was warm. There was no change in color. So I, I assume that everything happened very quickly. So I started immediately to perform CPR and mouth to mouth resuscitation. None of it worked. Jackson would never regain consciousness and is taken to UCLA Medical Center where he's pronounced dead. And an exhausted Dr. Murray can be seen leaving the worst day of his life. Prosecutors will resume playing the tape on Tuesday. For Nightline, Jim Avila, ABC News, Los Angeles.